Dude, about today we have a new pocket pin in the mix that we're checking out. This was sent to me by Shibui North. This is her popular pocket fox pin, but it has this new color, this special PVD coating. Not only is it pretty, it's extremely tough. Don't believe me? Let me show you. Here's the pen. Here's a key. Now you might think, oh, doodle bud, you scratched it. Nope, that's the key. Rub-a-dub-a, rub a dubby And look at that, not a mark on the pen. You might say, well, the keys are brass. Doodle bud, that's an easy test. Well, here's my feeler gauge and here's the thick steel one. Let's give that. See that? That's just some steel dust because it's getting beat up by this coating. Okay, give this a quick little shine and it looks just as good as new. Now, of course, there are limits at some point if you just really keep going at it. If you take a file, it'll probably skate for the first little bit, but eventually <laughs> you will wear it out. But just to show you, you can chuck this in your pocket and it will look great for a very long time. So that is one thing you worry about with your pretty pocket pens is keeping them in your pocket if they're especially nice. You don't want it to get all scratched up and damaged. So in this case, not only do we have a sharp looking pen, we have an extremely tough coating. I'm gonna go through, review it, tell you all about it. And also I'm gonna be doing something to this pen with a laser, I'll talk about that as well. You know what, since I have the other pens out here, let's just do the size comparison right away. Here we have the Gravitas pocket pen that's in stainless, a Kaveco AC Sport. Here is the Pocket Fox from Shibui North, the standard. Kaveco Sport, and then we have an Enso Pocket Puma. And now posted, you can see it's right there in the mix with the Kaveco Sport. I would say that's the closest for size comparison. Since we're talking about sizes, let's give you the dimensions. The pen like so, 104 millimeters. You remove the cap. It's a screw to post type pen. On the website, it says 129 millimeters. When I measured it, it was 126, so go figure. The diameter here, 12 millimeters and again on the site so this is the uh, stainless steel this is 304 stainless the website says 40 grams i'm getting 50 on my scale it comes fitted with a number six size bock stainless steel nib this one i believe is a fine at least the way it writes you can see here we have the threads down at the front of the section so for you know gripping it can just be whatever you want people sometimes complain about threads getting in the way they do not get in the way whatsoever sorry about dirty hands i was doing some cleaning before this video here uh very comfortable like it's a heavy pen my only uh pocket pen that's heavier is the gravitas one that weighs in at 57 grams but uh, at 50 grams it's quite heavy but because of this design, each module here, they're the same uh, length and diameter, all dimensions are the same. It's actually quite quite nicely balanced. You don't really even feel the weight in the hand. It's, it's quite comfortable. Now, obviously I have a big hand, so maybe for other folks it might be too small. But with its size and weight and everything, it's it's actually quite enjoyable. This same model, uh, the Pocket Fox comes with different materials. Uh, there's a lot of aluminum ones and different coatings, all that type of stuff as well. Uh, check out her website. I'll put a link down there in the description for that. But you can see here how the pen goes together because of the size. And, you know, just like with these other pens here too, it is a, a cartridge pen only. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen her pens either on her site or on Instagram. Again, I'll leave a link down there below. Give her a follow. But one thing that she does that's extremely unique, and I haven't seen anybody do that, is have some beautiful engravings on her pens. Now, uh, I think there's been some other reviews where they talk about that, but there's even some special coatings. Some of them have a Cerakote. There's one that she has. I'll flash some stuff on the screen here, but there's one called a Robin's Egg. Absolutely stunning. And the patterns get finished down onto the nib. Um, same with some of the other ones that have the engravings on there. She does this all herself on a, there's a chuck that she has. It's a rotary system with an actual engraver that's, that's dragging the bit in there and putting all the patterns. She designs the patterns herself and will also carry it down onto the nib. 
So that's something that's super unique. Now, this one is available on her site just as it is so, but also there's you can get it with different patterns as well. And the cool thing is there's no upcharge for that. So if you like it plain Jane like this, I mean, go for it. Uh, but something that I, I have not seen anybody else do is the beautiful, intricate engraving work all over the pen body and then also a lot of the times it's carried over into the nib and whether it's the engraving or the coating that's done as well it's absolutely gorgeous now the reason this one was sent to me plain like this without the engraving is she wanted me to try to do it myself with my laser setup so that that's super cool there's I, you don't really hear of anyone saying hey can you review my pen and by the way shoot it with your laser so i will be doing that not in this video i'll do that in a separate video just to kind of keep things separate um, but i thought i might as well finish off the review here before i start zapping this thing because maybe i screwed up and turned it ugly or hopefully it turns out really well, which I'm hoping for. What I'm going to do now is just chat about a little bit more, and then I'll do a writing sample, and we'll wrap things up. One thing with the pen, uh, it's about three turns to undo the cap fully. It would be cool if it was fewer turns, but you, you don't really feel it so much because you just kind of spin the pen, and you can, if you get it just right, I can never do it on camera, of course, but I, <laughs> I've been playing with it. There we go. You can just spin it on, right? So it doesn't really feel like three turns, but... That would be probably my only recommendation is just maybe adjust the thread, maybe make it multi-start or adjust the profile um, with new iterations just to make it a little bit quicker. But again, it doesn't really feel like it because you just put it on and you spin it and then it zips on there real quick. But let's get writing. So the finish is called Sky Flame. It has to do with this particular type of PVD coating. And just due to the process, uh, the parts and ends and all that, they'll all be just slightly different. So every pen will be just be slightly unique. Uh, if you get one, it may or may not have more or less purple or the blue might be just a little bit different, but it's a very interesting process how this is done. Also, because it's like a blue and purpley color, I just had to pick a sheening ink so uh, i don't know if you can pick it up here in the camera oh we start to get it now there we go um this is vinta ink and this is the i believe it's called bugong buha what i'll do now though i'll get out the, the uh, regalia paper because that thing just makes stuff go crazy and you can see even from this little fine point nib you get some cool sheen to match the cool color here on the pen Okay, let's just show you the two. So this is my favorite Muji paper. Now this stuff actually gets pretty good sheen on it. And you can see there, we're getting that. That looks pretty cool. Not too much on the scribble there, but you know, we're getting that cool effect. That matches the pen actually quite well. Let's go over to the regalia. And you can just see, it's just like upped the ante big time. So much more sheen. Man, love this paper. I have to say I'm not much one for matching ink to pens, but I think this is the best match I've done so far. So my thoughts on the pen, let's go through those. It's a very, very simple design, obviously, here, but I do like that the threads are in the front, especially with something like this. Um, you know, I have a few other pens now. They have the threads in the front, and I'm actually kind of digging it, es especially on this one, too, because it is a cartridge pen. I know threads in the front are a bit of a pain when you're when you're dipping it in an ink bottle because they can get in there. You're not going to have to worry about that with this because it's just a cartridge-only pen. I do like how the coating is continued there onto the nib. I think that's a very sharp detail. That also happens with her other pens as well. So, you know, this might not be the color combination for you that's appealing to you. But with her other pens and her other models, there's a few other models that she has. Um, that's a very, very nice detail. Again, I don't see that all the time. You'll have like a beautiful coating, all this type of stuff, and then just a standard nib. It goes down onto the nib here as well, whether it's some of the Cerakote or the custom engraving, all that type of stuff. I think that's a super, super nice detail. It is a heavy pen. 
but with the balance, just because each section here, the how it's constructed, they're all the same dimensions. Uh, the weight actually feels quite comfortable. It's not top heavy. It's it's just it's kind of it's kind of really nice. It's going to be equally balanced because well, all those sections weigh the same, so it's actually very very well balanced. Um, my only little thing, like I said, would be if you could get the cap uh, so it comes off with fewer turns. Now it is nice because you can spin it and it, it doesn't feel like three turns but maybe just a little bit of a revise at some point, checking the thread profile, whether it's multi-start or slightly different profile on the thread, just to get it on and off with uh, maybe one less turn or something like that. That would be something to look into exploring. Again, I'll have a link down in the description below on her site, depending what model you get, they go, and again, in US dollars, I think the default is uh, pounds, but if you convert it to US dollars, uh, depending on the model of the Pocket Fox, they'll go from about 127 to 140. Uh, on its own, if you didn't have any of the detail work, I would think oh, that might be a little bit much, but the price is the same if you get the engraving done. So I think with the engraving, and especially how it gets carried on to her nibs, and again, whether it's the engraving or whether it's the finishing, the coating that gets done on there, Again, I haven't seen anybody else, uh, I have obviously in the pen market doing that. I think she really is the only one. If you know someone else down there in the comments, leave, leave us some information down there too. But it's a very, very unique thing. Now she purposely uh, didn't send me one with the cool engraving. I'll, I'll throw it on the screen here so you can have a look um, because she goes, I wanna see what you can do with, with your laser. She's been seeing me doing some stuff on there. I've been talking to her a little bit and uh, she actually wants to get a really high-end laser system at some point way higher end than what i got but it's like i don't know thirty thousand dollars or something like that so she is curious to see what can i do with my homegrown system so but like i said i'll save that for another video so thanks again goes out to ruth at shibui north for sending me her brand new pocket fox in this gorgeous sky flame uh, PVD coating. Now, one thing I got to say is this stuff is tough as nails. As I showed you, I've been purposely been kind of bashing it around my pocket, not really caring what it comes in contact with. And as you can see here, not uh, any worse for the wear. So uh, that's quite impressive. That's really nice with a pocket pen to have that type of coating on there too. So it's all nice and pretty now. I'm going to be zapping this with the laser on a video pretty soon. So I figured I should get the review done while it's all looking nice and pristine. Hopefully I don't butcher it, but if I do, sorry, Ruth, if I do, but anyways, uh, thanks again to Ruth there at Shibui North. Check out her sites as always love to chat with you in the comments and we'll catch you next time.